What is good YouTube and welcome back to a brand new video today we are back with some more free agency rebuild trade rebuilds whatever you want to call it as today we're going to be doing a Robert Woods Tennessee Titans rebuild a rebuild we couldn't really get to because of so much going on but something that went under the radar of course the Tennessee Titans acquired Robert Woods for like just a six round draft pick which is kind of crazy so let's go ahead and jump right into this rebuild today. So as we know, the Tennessee Titans actually had a really good regular season and ended up even getting the first seed and the bye in the AFC playoffs, then lost in the first time they played against the Cincinnati Bengals, who ultimately went to the Super Bowl. So ultimately, a really disappointing season for the Tennessee Titans, and uh, it would be interesting to see how we're going to go about this. But one thing I do like is I do like the addition of Robert Woods, who obviously went down with an ACL tear, I believe it was, uh, towards the end of last year. So the uh, Tennessee Titans decided to cut Julio Jones, and then trade for Robert Woods, which uh, the Rams were ultimately going to move on from Robert Woods because they obviously already have uh, now Allen Robinson. And then I think they're looking to resign Odell, which that hasn't become official yet as I'm recording this. But, uh, you know, cutting Julio and getting Robert Woods, I think, is a decent move because Julio was a little disappointing, although there were some injury concerns there and injuries did happen for Julio this season. But I think Robert Woods is going to fit nicely here in Tennessee. So they want to go and get started. So it sounds like we have like $51 million in cast suits, which is nice. So you have Austin Hooper, who they also got for a one-year deal after he was cut from Cleveland. So I think I will be keeping him around because he's actually a really decent tight end. Now, before he went to Cleveland, he was actually really good for the Falcons. And then Cleveland, his year, uh, you know, he was up and down. But for the most part, obviously down. That's why he is being cut. And then uh, Njoku is probably the tight end there now for sure. So now we have Austin Hooper coming over. I don't really think there's anybody else I want to keep over here. I think we're going to go ahead and move on from everyone else comfortably. And then one thing we definitely have to make a decision on, whether we want to keep Ryan Tannehill as the quarterback for the rest of the video, just because I, I might be making a assessment that's not fair, but I feel like Ryan Tannehill was part of the reason why the Titans could not get it done in the playoffs. But uh, maybe Titans fans can correct me and say something else if I'm wrong. But uh, that's just my assessment. And it's been a while since I've seen that game, obviously. So just kind of going off memory and seeing if my memory's correct. But Offense needs some work on the offensive line. Could also use another wide receiver. Uh, maybe need another middle linebacker. And then, honestly, the safety positions in the corners are not too bad. So we have Farley, Bolton, Screen. Uh, maybe another corner. A number one corner maybe wouldn't hurt. And then a nose tackle, like I mentioned. You have Jeffrey Simmons and Autry, who I believe is like 20 or 32. Never mind. So Domenico Autry is getting up there in age. So that might be something we need to look to replace. Middle linebacker and long junior is 25. So maybe we could just let him roll there and see how he kind of does there. Maybe that's something we could look into. We'll see. And offense, like I said, another wide receiver definitely wouldn't hurt. And then probably some more offensive line help because the offensive line isn't great. But let's go ahead and jump into free agency with about our $40 million in cash space and just see what's available to us. Probably not going to be a ton, but we'll see what we can find. So we have Jesse Bates hitting free agency, which shouldn't be a thing, but we already have a free safety in Bayard or bird however you say it i think it's bird so jesse bates probably won't be going for him although if i didn't have a free safety i mean i probably wouldn't go for him regardless because the Bengals did franchise tag him in real life you have a keem hicks so we could put at the nose tackle i guess for a year if we wanted to that might be something we look into rob gronkowski melvin gordon jadavion Clowney. um not really gonna be a crazy replacement so we probably won't go for him and then bryce callahan jack fox uh so we probably JC Treader, though, that could actually be a nice one. Cleveland did cut him, so that might be something we should look into. Then you got uh, Julio Jones, which we obviously won't be getting back. And Brian Bulaga, Chris, Harler, Chris Harris. So uh, we might be going for JC Treader. That might actually be a really nice acquisition for us. Jacoby Myers, I don't think is actually a free agent in real life, but since he's here, kind of uh, considering the Jayon Br Brown, obviously from the Tennessee Titans, signed with the Las Vegas Raiders, won't be getting uh, him either. So you have Will Fuller, you have Beasley, who we could maybe sign for a year. I think Beasley could be nice here. You know what? I think I am going to go for a Cole Beasley. We'll give him like a one-year deal. I don't know, one-year 12 million. That seems like a lot for Cole Beasley. Maybe we won't do that. Maybe we'll go for a little bit of a cheaper option. MVS, obviously signed. Crowder signed. Washington signed. Isaiah McKenzie signed. Robinson signed. Auden Tate, I don't think is. He is cheap. Three years, two years. Yeah, we can go for Auden Tate. Be our slot wide receiver, I guess, for a few years. That'll, be, that'll just be a nice replacement there. We won't have to worry about it after that. And then, like I said... Defensive tackle, I don't think there was anybody other than Akeem Hicks who we could sign for a year, I guess, if we wanted to, which I'm, I might do that. We're going to sign Akeem Hicks for one year. That's it. And then we'll roll with that. So Akeem Hicks for one year, I think is uh, nice. We'll have him on the D-line. The middle linebacker, I'm not going for Jaron Brown. So we'll probably just leave that the way it is. And there really isn't a number one corner here that I can sit out and say, oh, we should be going for him to be our number one cornerback. So probably won't be going for anybody there. And if there's anybody else I, uh, I try to sign, I'll show you guys. But 
think we pretty much have everything we want so i also wanted to sign jc treader who i forgot about obviously that leaves ben jones on the outside looking in might just cut him we'll see and then odd and tate so uh obviously jc treader is a little bit younger than ben jones and he'll be probably be not that much younger but he's obviously a star development rather than a normal dev so jc treader would be nice let's go ahead and see if we get all three of our acquisitions here in free agency that will just fill out our defensive tackle position for a year at least that will give us a center for the long term and that will give us a slot wide receiver we can kind of rely on so we got all all of those guys which is great so that gives us an upgrade at our third wide receiver position we get a keem hicks and jc treader which is really nice we got all of them and that'll probably be it we're probably gonna be heading towards the draft now which i believe the titans have all their draft picks i could be wrong uh but this looks good to me Auden tate's gonna be a nice acquisition uh, like i said ben jones maybe we could just cut him i don't know we'll see we need a tackle another you know also use another guard what are these guys young by the way we got a 24 year old right tackle and a let's see we got a 24 year old left guard so they're both young but i don't know if i want to rely on them and defensively uh like i said we'll probably leave this all the way it is another corner wouldn't hurt so maybe address that in the draft but probably just gonna head to the draft now we definitely have some holes we still need to fill and we still need to question if we want to like maybe draft a quarterback to replace ryan Tannehill because that is definitely an option on the table right now so heading into the nfl draft we have pick number 30 in this simulation so like i said we just need to find a way to walk away with an impact player in each round if we can so we don't have a second round pick uh, which sucks but round one pick number 30 let's just see where we're able to get so we could go for a quarterback here to replace ryan Tannehill. we really could you also have charles cross on the board uh you have devin lloyd you have sam howell daxon hill there's so many options here ahmad garner is also here which is actually kind of uh, interesting because that would be the corner that we can maybe uh go for and feel really good about do we go for mod garner do we draft a quarterback what do we want to do so let's see what quarterbacks are still available so we got uh brock purdy matt corral so if we want to replace ryan Tannehill it would be now and that would be drafting like Matt Corral in the first round or something we could do that or do we want to go for a corner is the question I don't know I'm, I'm kind of torn here don't need a running back obviously um I don't know man I'm torn we could take uh, a defensive tackle as well and win free we could take Sanders here but I think I am gonna go ahead and draft a quarterback I'm gonna draft a quarterback to maybe replace Ryan Tannehill put some pressure on him so Matt Corral is gonna be the selection here at pick number 30 and uh, we'll just have to hope in the third round we can get another impact player. So that is going to be the pick at pick number 30. Ahmad Garner would have been a great selection as well. Uh, but like I said, I want to go ahead and maybe replace Ryan Tannehill in this video. We'll see if we do. Not sure. We'll see how he goes. You know, we'll see how he does this next season. It'll obviously be on him. Nolan Smith, uh, Sean, Zach, and then you got Avery Young, Richardson, Jalen Green, a right tackle, and Daniel Falale. I don't know how to say that name, but Joseph, and then tight end so there's uh you know we probably didn't get that great of a draft pick here but we'll have to do our best so tackle was kind of important defensive tackle but i'm maybe gonna look at the middle linebacker position and henry toto here and f cash and b finesse moves honestly don't even know what'll be a good pick here so probably just gonna be a blind pick here not really sure maybe we go for a right tackle that might actually be better deep pass block c b stamina c run block finesse i'll take a tackle i guess normal development and uh, we'll probably call it good after that so i think i'm gonna head out of the draft and we literally only got a quarterback and that was it so kind of an l draft not gonna lie but uh at least i uh, wish we had a second round pick but we did not which is unfortunate but it's all right we might have uh find ryan Tannehill. we might have found ryan Tannehill's replacement in the future which cutting Tannehill could free up some money depending on how his contract is structured uh, structured i'll have to look into that but let's go ahead and see what this team's gonna look like going into season number one so offense really doesn't change much the only thing i really did was i slid ben jones over to the left guard position just because he actually went up in overall which is nice derrick henry obviously the quarterback or running back i should say ryan Tannehill and then matt crowd backing him up who could potentially replace Tannehill in the future aj brown Auden tate robert woods austin hooper offense line is decent you know could use some work but then defensively uh we got bird here harold landry long cunningham bud dupree Amani hooker farley Autry, Akeem Hicks, Jeffrey Simmons, and Fulton. So here we go, man. We're gonna go into late this season. Like I said, if Ryan Tannehill sucks and we do not make the playoffs, uh, might be bye bye Ryan Tannehill. We'll see. But uh, let's see what happens in this next season. Obviously, we're gonna be relying on Derrick Henry heavy. So let's see if he can uh, get us to the playoffs this year. So at the end of the season, we went a disappointing seven and ten. Not a good look whatsoever. We're gonna have to see how Ryan Tannehill did. And like I said, it might be time to move on from the guy. We'll see. We'll we'll see how it goes. So let's go look at the stats. I also have to see how his contract is structured because it might be hard to move on from offense was actually sixth in the nfl i'm assuming that's a lot of uh derrick henry defense was 10th so i mean very good on both sides ryan Tannehill, 26 touchdowns eight interceptions 
I mean, it's not that he did anything wrong, really. I don't know. We'll, we'll see how things go. But rushing wise, Derrick Henry, like I said, 1,900 yards. Figured he was doing work out there. Derek King Henry, obviously. Cannon even had 400 yards in the ground and 13 touchdowns. Receiving wise, AJ Brown, 1,000. Auden Tate with 900. Then Robert Woods with 700. 700 from Austin Hooper. And defensively, if we go take a look, sacks wise, we had nine and a half from Jeffrey Simmons, seven from Akeem Hicks. So he ended up being a nice signing. Um, like I said, he was only here for a year. Might resign him. Who knows? Harold Landry, six. Then uh, four and a half, two and a half, one, one and a half. I know we have a lot of work to do, though, because the team is getting a little old. Christian Fulton with, uh, what was that, six interceptions? I don't know. Let's go ahead and get in the offseason, though. A lot more work to be done. And we're going to have to look at Ryan Tannehill's contract and see if we want to move on from him or do we want to keep him around. See what happens. So, of course, like always, we start with the annual resigning stage. But one thing I do want to take a look at before we even do that is I want to see if there's an escape from Tannehill's contract. I don't know if there is or not. Uh, let's see. So, we got... We can free up $27 million. He's got one year left, and I think we might be doing that. He went down to a 79 overall. So I think we might be handing the reins over, or we could trade him as well. Maybe some team would be willing to trade for Ryan Tannehill. We didn't think Carson Wentz was going to be a guy anybody would trade for, and you know, Washington Commanders did it. So we could trade Tannehill as well. That might be the better option, actually. Uh, so we'll see. And then Luan, and we got Bird with 14. We're not going to probably cut any of these guys. So uh, Robert Wood's on a long contract, which is nice. Okay. But let's go ahead and look at are the guys we do need to resign. So we take a look at his 12 players. I know Jeffrey Simmons, I believe, is a free agent, which obviously want to keep him. AJ Brown's for extension. Keem Hicks went up to a superstar dev. So kind of makes me want to keep him. Monty Hooker went up to uh, star development. So we got to keep him as well. Ben Jones probably won't be resigning. So uh, definitely some important resigns here. So Jeffrey Simmons, first and foremost, definitely want to keep the big man around. So let's go ahead and make sure we do keep one of our best pass rushers on the team uh, to keep. Keep him around, Jeffrey Simmons. Got him done. Let's go. A.J. Brown, of course. Um, a lot of these young wide receivers up for extension. And Ryan Tannehill might be a guy we need to cut. Because we do need to free up money right now. Uh, so A.J. Brown, he is done. He is back. And then Akeem Hicks. Probably won't focus on. Amani Hooker and Nate Davis are two guys I definitely want back, though. So Amani Hooker and then Nate Davis. Which one would I rather gamble on? Hitting free agency is the question. I wish I could trade Ryan Tannehill right now, but I just can't. Because I do want to trade him, ultimately. Like I said, we could cut him and free up the money right now. But I feel like getting a draft pick out of him would be nice. Because he didn't have a terrible year. So I feel like some desperate team might take him on. Uh, so let's go for... Let's go for a money hooker, just in case. So we'll keep a money hooker around who went up to start development this year. See if he would accept this. And we can't even offer this. So, yeah. We might have to wait till free agency to get both those guys back. Which is going to be a gamble... It's a gamble I'm willing to take. We got Brown and Jeffrey Simmons back. So we obviously need Nate Davis and Amani Hooker back. Uh, but maybe I should free up just a little bit of money by cutting somebody. Maybe Ben Jones is that guy. We'll see. Or no, I think he's a free agent, actually. So let me see if there's anybody else. Maybe we cut Derrick Henry. Just kidding, obviously. But uh, we could cut Taylor Lewan, who's 32 years old. Maybe could do that. Uh, Bird, we're not going to cut. Robert Woods, we're not going to cut. Henry, obviously not. And then Cunningham, Dupree. We get a. Oh, he went up to a, went down to a 70 overall. Gives us a $9 million penalty, but we would be cutting $10 million off. And Autry as well. We might cut Autry. So I'm going to cut D'Amico Autry. I'm going to free up about $7 million. And I think I literally might cut Bud Dupree as well. So we're going to be kind of uh, revamping the defense a little bit. So we're going to cut both those guys. That should give me enough money to re-sign, uh, obviously, Monty Hooker and, of course, Nate Davis. And then we can go trade Ryan Tannehill. So I'm shipping Ryan Tannehill over to the Pittsburgh Steelers for a third round draft pick. Um, I don't know if the Steelers would give up a third rounder for a guy like Ryan Tannehill. I don't know, man. I'm just going to go ahead and do it. So get a third round draft pick for Ryan Tannehill. Uh, Pittsburgh Steelers' number one need was a quarterback. So that's why we went ahead and did that. So now they've given the realms over to Matt Corral. I don't really know if he went up in development or not because obviously he didn't play last year. He sat behind Ryan Tannehill. And he is star development, which is nice. So, obviously, we kind of revamped the roster a little bit. We made some cuts. Wide receiver core, offensive line needs some work. And then Austin Hooper is the tight end. Uh, but defensively, we did make some uh, interesting cuts. So, we have uh, Bird here. We have Farley still. Bolton. Like I said, I still want a number one overall corner, really. A number one corner. And then a defensive line needs help. So And then linebacker core needs help. So, obviously, still a lot of work to be done. But picking up that draft pick can help us out a little bit. But... It is now Matt Corral and Derrick Henry's team, so we'll see how it goes. We're going to have about $33 million in cap space to work with, so that should give us a couple of good pieces. Denzel Ward obviously sounds like a guy I would love to go get, but that's probably not realistic. Miles Sanders, I mean, if we need a running back, I'd go for a running back, but we obviously don't need one. Montez Sweat, though, is somebody we could use because obviously we did just cut 
uh Autry so Montez Sweat could get us younger at that position that makes a lot of sense in my opinion and then as far as the defensive tackle Keem Hicks is still out here who had a really good year for us Goldman but we might be taking the tackle in round one and then linebackers we got Smoot we got Drew Tranquil out here who could be an interesting linebacker TJ Edwards who's a scheme fit has one offer so maybe go for him and then Cole Holcomb maybe or Ferguson I don't know we'll see uh, cornerbacks again would love to get Denzel Ward but I'm not sure how realistic that would be for us and we don't need safety so we're gonna go ahead and uh, offer some contracts we do need offensive line help as well Jenkins makes a lot of sense so let's get spending so our offers are gonna be on Jenkins Montez Sweat and TJ Edwards to try to acquire on the defensive line middle linebacker core and of course the offensive line so to get Jenkins that'd be really nice so uh, Matt Crawl gets a protection, and that would be a really nice signing for us. And Montez Sweat on the D-line would be awesome as well. Of course, we don't get Jenkins, though. That was probably the guy I wanted the most. But we do get Montez Sweat and TJ Edwards as guys that will help out on the defense, which is great. So um, that sucks. We didn't get Jenkins, though. That gives us about $16 million, though, still to spend. Would have been a really nice addition to the roster, but we did not grab him. We did get Sweat, like I said, and we also got TJ Edwards, which is going to be our new middle linebacker. Still need an outside linebacker, still need a nose tackle, and still need offensive line help, though. Sucks we didn't get him. Uh, but let's go take a look once again at free agency. Still have about $16 million in cap space to work with. So we should be able to get at least one good player still. Lamar Jackson, obviously not going to go for him. Miles Sanders, Hayward, Callahan, Sean Murphy, Bunting. I mean, we can go for another corner, I guess, if we wanted to. That could solve the cornerback problem that we've been kind of having. Mitch Morris, if we needed a center. Kenyon Drake, we don't need. And then uh, Curse, yeah. So basically... I'm thinking a corner. I guess we can go for the corner we were just talking about. Marlon Mack. Yeah, we're not really going to go for any of those guys. So, yeah, I think that's what I'm going to be doing. I think I'm just going to sign Sean Murphy Bunting and call it good. So, I'm going to sign the corner. And we're going to be heading to the draft probably. So, Sean Murphy Bunting, we can grab you. That'd be great. And then I'll feel pretty good about my cornerback room. But we're going to have to go on to uh, the draft and build in the trenches still. Still need offensive line help. And still are definitely going to need some uh, more help on the D. So, Let's go ahead and see if we get Sean Murphy Bunting. If we do, we can move on to the draft and uh, see what draft picks we have. Picked up, picking up a third definitely helps. And of course, we didn't get Sean Murphy Bunting. Why would we not? Why would we get him? So heading into the NFL draft, we do have a top 10 pick, which is nice. So let's go ahead and see if we can get pick number eight overall. Because like I said, we have a lot of needs. So this will definitely be a good draft if we can make it a good one. So let's see. So we got Turner. So we could use a tackle. Uh, we don't need a running back. A tight end, obviously, is always cool. Driven Dexter could throw on the D-line a defensive tackle, which we do need. Uh, we got corners out here. So there's a lot, a lot that we could go for. So I think I want to start with maybe Turner here because our left tackle position right now is a little lackluster. So I think I'm going to draft Turner with this uh, number one overall or eighth overall pick, I should say. He's a normal development, which is really annoying, but I know he's good. So that's fine. Let's get Turner to be one of our tackles. And then the eighth overall uh, in the second round, I also have our third round pick. So that'll be nice too. So we got Marvin Mims, Chris Bogle, Woody Washington, Karan Ponte, Jalen Kimber, and then Corral is out here again, I guess. And then Darnell Washington, Noah as well. So uh, we don't really want a tight end, though. So, I mean, Mims would be a cool wide receiver, but Chris Bogle. Um, I believe we need an outside linebacker, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, our outside linebacker position is a little uh, unfortunate. A finesse move, C play recognition. Don't really know his coverage, though. Not that it really matters. Um, so Chris Bogle might be the guy I draft here with this pick. So I'm going to draft Chris Bogle. Another normal development. Damn. Okay, so another normal dev. That'll suck. That kind of sucks, but at least we're uh, getting some guys fill out the holes we kind of needed. In round three, pick number eight. If we can get like a star development in round three, that'd be really nice. We have another third round pick. So this will be important. So we picked offensive line. We picked linebacker. And then we need another defensive. We need a defensive tackle still. We do have another offensive line on the board. Jack Nelson, Darnell Wright, a lot of offensive linemen on the board. Then Mc, uh, McKinley Jackson, Texas A&M. So let's see. So A tackle. He's a number one fit for us. B player recognition, B hit power, C impact block. I think we got to take a chance on him. Another normal development defensive tackle. And then we'll see at this 23rd overall pick if one of those offensive linemen kind of fell to this uh, selection. If they did, then that'll be uh, probably our last pick. So let's see. We got Darnell Wright who fell and Walter Parks. So Darnell Wright out of Tennessee, C pass block, C impact block, uh, B run block from the S. I think I'll take him. Normal development. So all normal development in this draft, which is really unfortunate but obviously guys can go up we'll see how it goes but that'll be the draft so uh, i think we did a decent job but still uh obviously would have loved some hidden development players rather than normal development so this is what the offense looks like going into season number two so it looks like the cpu has my back and they drafted a hidden development guard in the draft which is awesome because obviously we didn't get a single hidden development player but the 
CPU got me one. JC Treader, Nate Davis, Taylor Juan, and then obviously we got him with our first overall, or not first overall, but our first round pick, Turner, who's a 73 overall. So he should be going up nicely. And defensively, uh, we have uh, TJ Edwards. We didn't get Chris Bogle, but he's not better than Johnson here, who is 23. So I guess we're going to lie on him this year, see how that goes. We got Jackson on the D-line, so we'll have to see how he does. But um, this is Matt Corral's team now. No more Ryan Tannehill, and obviously Derrick Henry is the guy, so... We'll kind of see how things go. Let's see if we can make the playoffs in season number two with Matt Crowell as the quarterback. So at the end of the season, we went nine and eight and actually made the playoffs with Matt Crowell at quarterback. Obviously, the division was terrible, though, so we can't really be too happy with that performance. But, hey, we'll take a nine and eight finish in the playoffs in the home game in the playoffs going against the Denver Broncos. So let's see what we're going to be doing as far as or let's see what our stats would look like, I should say. Offense was 24th in the NFL. So with Tanner Hill gone, the offense suffered a little bit. Defense did suffer a little bit too. Obviously, we made some cuts to kind of, you know, change the team a little bit. Matt Corral, 22 touchdowns, 11 interceptions. He is up to a 74 overall, so that's nice. Rushing-wise, Derrick Henry, 1,800 yards. Of course, King Henry still doing his thing. Austin Jones, 300 yards behind him. Robert Woods, 870 yards. And then we didn't have a 1,000-yard receiver. A.J. Brown, 840. And then 800 from Auden Tate, 500. And then Derrick Henry even had 200 uh, receiving yards. Defensively, though, sacks-wise, we had 9.5 from Simmons. Nine and a half from Montez Sweat, three and a half from Landry, and then two from Edwards and two from Mac. So, and uh, then one from uh, Zach Cunningham and one from McKinley Jackson. Interceptions wise, we had two from Zach Cunningham, two from Vernon McKinley, two from Farley, and then two from Monty Hooker, two from Bird, and then one from Edwards and one from Fulton. So, we're going to jump into this playoff game going up against the Denver Broncos. Matt Corral's first playoff game, so this is good for him. Let's see if we can maybe win and go to the division round. You never really know. So here comes Matt Corral wearing number 15 for the Tennessee Titans. This is in Tennessee, so that's good. That that's We have that going for us. It is a home playoff game. But Russell Wilson comes into town. A start here would be, or I would say a score would be awesome to start, but only a field goal after interception. The Broncos respond with their own field goal. Matt Corral goes down the field and gets another field goal, and the Broncos respond with their own field goal. And we get another field goal. And then we get a stop, and then uh, nothing so far. So this game, okay, now we get a touchdown. It's 6-16. to 16. Broncos do respond with their own touchdown, though. It is 13-16. to 16. We get a stop. Again, interception from Zach Cunningham. And can we get a score here? No, it is still a three-point game. Uh, the Broncos are going to take the lead with 35 seconds left. We have all three timeouts. So I guess this is going to be our postseason run here. So, oh, I like the press coverage on A.J. Brown right now. So if you want to give me press on A.J. Brown... I guess the, their safety came over, so that's good on them. I have B, though. Oh, my goodness. That was a little sketchy, but I will take that. And that is going to be a really nice gain. 45-yard line, 16-16. We are almost in field goal range, and they don't have a single timeout to ice me, which I feel really good about. But I just want to make sure we win this game. Derrick Henry is literally lining up on a wheel route. That is kind of interesting. Would we really see Derrick Henry on a wheel route like that? I don't think so. We have X. Oh, I'm sold, man. Ah. I had X wide open too. That's so annoying. Okay. I was too focused on Derrick Henry. It's all right though. I, I got this. All we need is field goal range. Uh, AJ Brown, Austin Hooper. I got, I mean, we have one timeout left though. So we have to be very careful. Cannot take a sack here either. Um, I don't know, bro. I have RB. Oh, this is sketchy. This is sketchy business. And I threw an interception. Uh, we just got to make sure we get him down. Eight seconds left. looks like we're going to go to overtime probably. All right, that was uh, that was sketchy, not going to lie. And the Broncos get the ball, and they're going to score and beat us. So, yeah, there you go. There, there's me jumping in and losing the game. But it's all right. A, a whole nother offseason. I'm not even worried about it. So another re-signing stage where we have quite a bit of important free, actually only like four important free agents. So obviously, I would like Derrick Henry back. He is the kind of the leader on offense here. So, uh, yeah, Derrick Henry, and he's going to be super cheap here in Madden. So, uh, you know what? Thank you, Madden. If you want to make Derrick Henry literally... Okay, franchise tagging Derrick Henry might be my best interest. 16 million per year is not bad for Derrick Henry at all. So Landry, I'm gonna go ahead and try to grab and uh, we'll get Harold Landry back hopefully. And he's gonna test free agency too. Damn, I'm, I guess I'm just lowballing these guys. I don't know what's going on. We need uh, Harold Landry back, Terry Lewan. We got him back, W, and then Fulton I want back as well. So damn, we gotta go for Harold Landry in free agency. Christian Fulton is back. All right, so. We got Fulton back, which is important. And Landry is somebody we definitely need to get back. We had a franchise tag Derrick Henry. So kind of screwed ourselves with $7 million there. But going in with $31 million in cap space. I have to look real quick at the team overall and just kind of see what this is looking like. So offense and defense um, is decent, but obviously still needs more work. 
offensive line is good we got derrick henry back so offense i don't think i'll, f I'll focus on whatsoever I'm, I'm cool with the offense and then defensively um edwards obviously we need uh harold landry back a number one corner still wouldn't hurt and a linebacker still wouldn't hurt so actually we might be able to accomplish what we want to accomplish this offseason so landry definitely want him back 31 dollars uh that extra 7 million would be really nice right now jensen we don't really have the money for harold landry of course i do not want to lose him let's make sure we get him back so landry if you could come accept your contract to come back to be a tennessee titan that'd be greatly appreciated i'm going to overpay him just a little bit more in order to make sure we do get him back so cap it will be quite kind of big but it'll be worth it so we have darius slay as a cornerback uh we have Lam jc jackson a free agency okay I think we got to go for jc jackson we got to sell out for jc jackson oh i don't know if we're gonna have enough actually one year yeah it's not gonna be enough so never mind we're not gonna be able to get jc jackson unless i cut somebody which um Darius slay i guess could be a guy we go for a year and then the other thing was we got landry back so we have another we have josh yuchi we could go for or you however you say his name so maybe we just go for that maybe we could go for that so we have to get josh yuke outside of uh Landry so we'll sign him and uh, maybe he'll be the guy we want so Josh Yuke or Yuchi however you say his name so let's see if we get both those guys if we do I'll be very happy with that so our linebacker core would look a lot better so let's see if we get both of them Landry come back please and Yuke is or however you say his name uh please come back or please come to Tennessee and we got both of them which is great so now linebacker core is going to look a little bit better I still definitely want maybe a number one corner though and I think I want to accomplish that so JC Jackson probably not in free NC anymore Offense, again, I'm not going to worry about. But uh, now we got a really nice, interesting linebacker core with Uke, Edwards, Cunningham, and Landry. So the only other thing, like I said, that I've been kind of hammering on the whole video is a number one corner. I'm going to get myself a number one corner. I don't care. I'm doing it. So at the end of the season, this video is going to come to a disappointing end. I did not get a number one overall corner. We went eight and nine on the season. Robert Woods is going down overall fast. So probably was going to end it off here we uh got to the playoffs once in this video we beat the texans week 18 but colts went 15 and 2 and jaguar went 14 and 3 so yeah we had no chance but this was the final rush that we were able to put together uh but robert woods in the tennessee titans that'll be interesting to see how that goes in real life i love the addition of the team uh obviously we moved on from ryan Tannehill in the video got matt corral but uh, unfortunately uh, we did not make the playoffs in this last season. So, you know what? This one it wasn't one of my better rebuilds, I will admit. But the titans cap situation wasn't always the best. So, uh, you know what? It's fine. I'll take my L. And uh, sometimes that happens. I will take my L. That is totally fine with me. Offense was 16 in the NFL. And the defense, let's see, was uh, also 31st. So, yeah, not good at all. So, Crow, 26 touchdowns, 13 interceptions. Aaron Henry, 1,500 yards, 18 touchdowns. And Auden Tate, 1,000 yards defensively, sacks-wise. We had uh 10 and a half eight and a half five so that'll be it for me guys i hope you did enjoy the video definitely like if you did we'll be back with some more we still got the eagles we want to do we still want to do the ravens uh but we'll see uh thank you guys for watching this is crushables i'm saying peace thank you guys so much for watching make sure you click here to watch another video that i know you'll love